This is a perfect spot. The faster we can get this site set up, man, the faster we can get some cash rolling. What's up, James? Hey, man, what's going on, Rich? Nothing much, man. What's happening? Oh, man, I'm down in New Orleans, man. I had a barbecue, man. I had a little bit of that shine with me, man. That moonshine, the one I got from you. Uh-huh. My people taste it, bro. Come on, what they think? Hey, oh, man, they love it. And look what else, man. They wonder if you can get some more farm, you know? I told them a look. They want the green one, you know? Green? Green absinthe? Oh, yeah, the green one, the absinthe, man. Oh, absinthe. They say that's that good one, man. From what I know about absinthe, it has a lot of ingredients in it. I've never made anything like this before. Definitely got to do some research on it, but I mean, that stuff expensive, man. They got that money. Charge about two fifty for a gallon. We could do it. We could make that money. All right, I appreciate it. I'll take care of you on the back end. All right, thank you, sir. All right, thank appreciate you. it, my brother. Two fifty a gallon, that's not bad. No, but what the hell is absinthe? What's in it? I know what's in it, money. Absinthe. The legendary liquor known as the Green Fairy has been shrouded in mystery and myth since it was first invented by a French doctor in the 1700s. A potent mix of grain spirit and over 12 herbs and botanicals give absinthe its licorice-like flavor and evocative green hue. Absinthe was outlawed in 1912 in the United States when rumors spread that wormwood, the same ingredient that's said to give absinthe its psychedelic properties, caused madness. It was later discovered that no scientific evidence supported the claim. However, it wasn't until nearly a century later in 2007 that the ban was finally lifted and Americans could legally dance with the Green Fairy once again. Ain't nobody making no absinthe. New Orleans is all about drinking. This is a new client in a new city. I mean, this is the type, type of customers we're looking for. This works, this can open up a whole big market for us. We gotta set up this steel site. I'm gonna leave this here. We're gonna let this alligator know we're here now. But our reputation is at stake. What if we turn in a product that's not really good? It's a high-end customer in New Orleans we're dealing with. I wanna give them our best. Now that our deck is built, we're gonna do our sugar wash, a high proof neutral spirit for our absinthe. I've done a lot of research on it. The first thing we have to do with absinthe is run a base spirit, a neutral spirit, something that doesn't taste like anything. Sugar and water, most neutral you can get. The only flavors that we're gonna introduce into this is the things that we bring into it with the fennel, the wormwood. Oh, all the botanicals. The botanicals. So that's where the flavor comes in on the back end. All that stuff combined is gonna give it this vibrant green color. And when you loose it, when you introduce the water to it, it turns this whitish color and you can see it kind of darting around. That's when the oils separate themselves and they start to develop their aroma and flavor. This is some mad science. It's the kind of science that will make you mad. Check this wash out, man. Yeah. I'm nervous about this stuff. Check this out. Oh, oh man, yeah. that's crazy. Look at that. Mm. Man, I uncapped this mash barrel, and this thing is rolling like a pot of gumbo. This is a good yeast. This is so crazy. It doesn't smell like anything but alcohol. If this is any indication of how a final product is going to be, we're going to have a kick-ass absinthe. Oh, yeah. It smells like it's ready to drink now. Yeah, but it needs to go a couple more days. Come on, we're going to leave it alone, come back. Hopefully, it'll be ready to run. We'll let that work off. It gives us a little time to sit down and look at some of these botanicals and try to figure out what we're going to put in our absinthe. And I got all the little botanicals that we need. Absinthe has a lot of different characters and flavors. This fennel and this wormwood. This is the knee seed. For my research, the most important ingredients in absinthe are fennel, wormwood, and anise. Fennel and anise. This is where we get the licorice flavor in absinthe. It helps counter the bitter taste in the wormwood. Lemon balm? Lemon balm. Lemon balm. It adds a citrus flavor. It smells like what it sounds like. Some spearmint and hyssop. Hyssop is something different. It's in the mint family, too. Hyssop. It's an old, old, old herb. This is going to give a little softness to our complexity. Come on, I want to try some of this. All thing. right, let's try it. You know, some of these herbs I've never really even heard of. Just tasting them is taking your taste bud somewhere it's never been before. I'm gonna bite this whole straw True licorice, you taste and plant. It tastes just like licorice, man. Very overpowering. This is a new seed right here. This little bit of seed right here has way, way, way more flavor than this. Bigger seed than this thing right here. 
wormwood, major ingredient right here. What is this gonna taste like? It actually smells good. So I take a little pinch to taste, and man. Oh my, that's wormwood. Tastes like a worm. My God, don't taste that. Ooh. Okay, now you see that right there ain't good for you. Wormwood definitely surprises you. This is complex, that's why you taste so much in this drink. We've researched a lot of recipes. We've researched a lot of history with absinthe. So we're gonna take all of those recipes and kind of take a little bit of this, a little bit of that, kind of muddle some, some of this stuff. We're gonna give it a little early start. We're gonna put all that together and come up with our own absinthe recipe. We're trying to get that, that smell and that taste consistency right kind of in a powder form. All the time and the effort that we're investing into this, I mean, it's a lot of time it takes to do this drink. This is a real complicated process. If this doesn't work, not only will we be losing a customer, but we'll be losing a lot of time, and that's something that you can't get back. There we go, we're dripping. We're getting our first little drip drop, the beginning of something good. Go ahead and throw that off. This is 160, 170 for sure. Man, first sip I had, I knew this was gonna be close to 170. This tastes awesome. They say this is just a sugar wash. Give me my money. Two big ones, boy. I could drink an expensive beer tonight. Yeah, not quite, man. 165. 165, that's pretty good for a first run that's of pretty a damn sugar good. wash. That's strong, man. That is. Man, you know how many hangovers I could cause in Louisiana? Come on, let's get this going. So we're hoping to get at least three gallons of our base spirit. Hey, get another jar so we, so we don't lose oh, all yeah. this. It's putting off more liquor than we thought. This is, it's running like crazy. Man, this is the last jar, man. Give me that bucket. This will be good to go. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this distillate that we got out of here. We're gonna go through a maceration process. We're gonna take the fresh herbals, the fresh botanicals that we have, and we're gonna put them in here, let them sit for 24 hours. Now that we have our base spirit, we're gonna add all these herbs to it. All right, so that's 40 grams of anise seed. Dump that in there. Dump. We're gonna write that down. We're weighing all these herbs. We want to be able to replicate this if this comes out right and don't have to guess. Star anise is something else, man. This is powerful, strong. I look at this sugar wash like a blank canvas. All we have to do is put it on an easel, get our botanicals, and paint them on. Experiment. A little of this goes a long way. This high proof alcohol is gonna start to break down all of these oils, which is an essential part of absinthe. We're gonna go with your friend here. Mr. Wormwood is a staple in this. I know. I don't really know what we're gonna end up with. Hopefully it doesn't taste nothing like Wormwood.